esophageal varices is the topic and esophageal varices are essentially the dilated veins that exist in the distal esophagus so you've got these dilated veins that are um, in the distal part of the esophagus and what can happen is that they can rupture and if they rupture they can cause an episode of massive bleeding now there's a elevated pressure in the portal venous system and that's why these veins are dilated now why does this happen what's the cause the most common cause of dilation in those veins leading to esophageal varices is uh, liver cirrhosis and in particular most of the clinical vignettes involve alcoholics alcoholic uh, uh, alcoholism now the portal pressure rises and eventually what happens is these veins in the esophagus start to become engorged and serpentine like and they exist in the submucosa of the esophagus and of course they're given a special name and that special name is known as varices and because they're in the distal esophagus esophageal varices now what happens is if the pressure is greater than a certain amount these varices can rupture so when the pressure gradient gets really high greater than 12 the varices can rupture and when that happens you have essentially caused massive bleeding and it's actually pretty dramatic when a patient presents um, to uh, emergency room so what are the symptoms well apart from the history of a person who's an alcoholic uh, with uh, known liver cirrhosis basically you have an episode of massive upper GI bleeding now I wanted to quickly mention that clinical vignettes will sometimes try to trick you by putting in uh, massive bleeding or some other terms but in the answer choices they'll have another option known as Mallory Weiss tears and you might wonder what's the difference between Mallory Weiss tears and this topic esophageal varices because both occur in alcoholics and both cause upper GI bleeding well the difference is that both of them can cause upper GI bleeding of course but esophageal varices will cause a more dramatic and impressive episode of upper GI bleeding so usually the esophageal varices have massive bleeding whereas the Mallory Weiss tears because they are just small tears in the esophagus the bleeding is not as dramatic so that's how you can think about it so how do you diagnose this well by far you know the, the main way to do it is an EGD esophageal esophago gastro duodenoscopy big long word essentially it means for those of you who don't know it's a tube that you put down the esophagus that has a camera and it takes a look at what's going on inside now in addition to the EGDs do some simple blood tests CBC obviously if there's any type of bleeding I always want to check the CBC PT PTT these are bleeding related tests liver function tests to check person is most likely a person with uh, alcoholic liver cirrhosis now how do you treat it well there's two things that are done the first is a medication that's given IV it's known as octreotide and what octreotide does is it decreases the blood flow and in addition 
what happens is there's an inhibition. It inhibits the vasodilation. So these are contributory factors. Vasodilation is, of course, a contributory factor to the fact that there was bleeding in the first place. So that's a very important medication given IV. The next thing that's done is something known as endoscopic banding. And what this means is that essentially while you're doing the EGD, at the same time, what you do is you put a rubber band around the enlarged veins. And what that does is essentially cuts off the blood supply or blood flow and helps to control uh, this uh, condition. Now, if a person continues to bleed or has uh, recurrent uh, bleeding or if there's an emergency situation, you do a procedure known as TIPS. And TIPS stands for Transjugular Intrahepatic Portosystemic Shunting. Now what this means is that this is a procedure that is done to create a bypass uh, between the portal and hepatic venous circulations. Now what this does is it essentially relieves the portal hypertension and that helps to decrease blood flow. So that is the TIPS procedure. So now let's look at some clinical vignettes. A 45 year old man who is admitted to the hospital for alcohol detox develops bloody emesis on day three. Uh, over the past hour, there has been approximately 500 cc's of bloody emesis. The patient has history of alcoholism and hepatitis C. Vitals are temperature is 38. Blood pressure is 100, pulse is 122, respirations are 9. Patient is oriented and answers questions normally. Physical exam reveals a thin, jaundiced man in a mildly lethargic state. He has mild ascites, caput medusa, and lower extremity edema. Most urgent clinical issue that should be addressed is? Well, this is a classic scenario with a patient with a history of alcoholism and hepatitis C. Both are risk factors for cirrhosis of liver. And he's definitely presenting with a pretty good amount of hematemesis, which is the vomiting blood. And without a doubt, the most urgent clinical issue is um, the fact that he's got esophageal varices and that those varices have ruptured and causing this uh, bloody uh, vomit. So that would be E. Next question, 58-year-old homeless man is brought to the emergency department with severe hematemesis. He has a history significant for severe alcohol abuse and significant esophageal varices with bleeding in the past. You notice in his old chart that it was recommended that he take a multivitamin, folate, and thymine. Blood pressure is 100, pulse is 105, respiratory rate is 26. Physical exam shows coarse breath sounds and a protuberant abdomen. Nasogastric lavage yields fresh blood. Given that you strongly suspect another variceal bleed, the most appropriate next step in the management of this patient is. Well, uh, they've mentioned all these medications and you have to figure out which one. Well, the medication that's given IV is a medication that decreases blood flow. And in, in addition to decreasing blood flow, it also inhibits vasodilation. And of the ones listed, the one that does both of those things is octreotide. And then finally, 47-year-old man comes to the office for a follow-up 
management of his ascites and cirrhosis. He has been your patient for three years. He has known hepatitis B and alcohol-induced cirrhosis. He takes furosemide and spironolactone daily. Six weeks ago, he underwent an upper GI endoscopy that showed grade 3 esophageal varices. You are interested in offering him therapy to prevent a possible devastating upper GI bleed. The most appropriate management to prevent bleeding is two. Well, one thing I immediately notice is you come to your office, so this is not an emergent situation. You have to sort of um, discuss it with him. So the TIPS procedure is probably not going to be the most appropriate management right now. TIPS procedure is done usually in emergency situations to relieve portal hypertension and that decreases uh, the risk of bleeding. But if he's relatively stable right now, probably want to offer something more different. Um, of those, the most uh, appropriate uh, recommendation would be this banding where you would put essentially a rubber band around the uh, varices and that will allow you essentially to uh, prevent them from rupturing and uh, that essentially is the first line treatment other than the octreotide which was mentioned in the previous question. The rubber bands that are placed around these enlarged veins help to cut off the blood flow and help prevent um, the devastating upper GI bleed that uh, you are most likely worried about him developing. So that would be choice D.